The TV series Rawhide featured Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood, among others, in an American Western setting. It was about a trail boss named Gil Favor, who often started episodes with a monologue. The show followed the drovers as they faced corrupt individuals and traveled to towns, dealing with crooked townsfolk or lawless politicians. The episodes were filled with adventures and challenges, making Rawhide a popular choice for Friday nights on CBS, later moving to Tuesday nights. Dying. Washington? Yes, sir, he got away. Sergeant, mount up a detail. In the late 1950s, audiences were captivated by a TV series that depicted the trials and tribulations of a group of cowboys driving cattle across the American West. This classic, titled Rawhide, boasted an impressive 217 black and white episodes, each one contributing to the show's lasting legacy. One character who stood out among the rest was Rowdy Yates, played by a relatively unknown actor named Clint Eastwood. Rowdy Yates was a young and impulsive cowboy, often requiring guidance and discipline from his more experienced peers. His youthful exuberance contrasted sharply with the stoicism and wisdom of the other drovers, creating a compelling dynamic that made for great television. Initially introduced as a greenhorn, Yates gradually evolved into a seasoned ranch hand over time, thanks in large part to the mentorship he received from gruff trail boss Gil Favor. Favor, played by Eric Fleming, took it upon himself to mold Yates into a capable and responsible cowhand. He recognized the potential in Yates, but also understood that he needed to learn how to control his reckless tendencies. As a result, their relationship became central to the show's narrative, providing viewers with a glimpse into the unique bonds that can form between individuals under extreme circumstances. The challenges facing the drovers were numerous, ranging from encounters with hostile Native American tribes to dealing with rustlers looking to steal valuable livestock. These obstacles required quick thinking and resourcefulness, qualities that both favor and Yates possessed in spades. Through their collective efforts, they managed to overcome these hurdles while building a strong camaraderie along the way. Overall, Rawhide remains a beloved piece of television history, thanks in no small part to the memorable performances of its cast members. Its engaging storylines and timeless themes continue to resonate with modern audiences, making it a must-watch for anyone interested in exploring some of the best Western dramas ever produced. And let us not forget the impact that Rawhide had on launching Clint Eastwood's illustrious career, further solidifying its place in cinematic history. John Redcliffe. In the late 1950s, a TV series called Rawhide introduced audiences to a young actor named Clint Eastwood. This show featured intense action scenes that helped establish Eastwood's career, making him a familiar face in households across America by the time it ended in 1966. Following his success on Rawhide, Eastwood went on to become a major movie star. He played leading roles in several groundbreaking films during the mid-1960s, all part of what would later be known as the spaghetti western genre. Among these were A Fistful of Dollars in 1964, followed by For a Few Dollars More in 1965, and finally The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly in 1966. These movies brought something fresh to the traditional western format, often characterized by their morally ambiguous protagonists, unique cinematography, and increased violence compared to American westerns of the same era. Eastwood's performances in these three films significantly contributed to reinventing the western genre. His portrayal of stoic yet complex characters resonated deeply with viewers, setting new standards for future cowboy roles. Despite being low-budget productions filmed primarily in Europe, they became box office hits and solidified Eastwood's status as a bankable Hollywood star. Today, these classics remain some of the most influential pieces of cinema within the broader category of westerns. Their impact continues to reverberate through contemporary pop culture, inspiring countless remakes, adaptations, and homages over the years. Jacob! In the late 1950s, a popular TV series called Rawhide graced American television screens. This classic western followed the adventures of a group of cattle drivers led by rowdy trail boss Gil Favor, played by Eric Fleming. Alongside him was Rowdy Yates, portrayed by a young Clint Eastwood, who would later become one of Hollywood's most iconic actors. Years after its initial run, the studio Jolly Film decided to repurpose some Rawhide episodes to create a new movie titled The Magnificent Stranger. 
they edited and combined various scenes featuring Eastwood's character, transforming it into a standalone feature. However, this move didn't sit well with Eastwood, who believed his image and performance were being exploited without proper compensation. Consequently, he took legal action against Jollyfilm. As a result of Eastwood's lawsuit, The Magnificent Stranger was withdrawn from circulation in 1967. Despite its brief existence, this incident highlighted the complexities surrounding ownership rights and creative control in the entertainment industry. While fans of both Rawhide and Eastwood may have been disappointed, the controversy served as a reminder of the value placed upon original artistic works. And, uh, you expect us to believe you're gonna ride out there all alone, is that it? Well, I ain't exactly anxious. If you got a better idea, I'll listen to your... Rawhide was a 1959 TV series that aired on CBS. It was directed by John Wayne and starred Clint Eastwood, who played the character of Rowdy Yates. The show's plot revolved around the struggles of the Wild Bunch, a group of outlaws who were trying to escape the law. Rawhide was darker than typical westerns, dealing with heavy subject matter and occasional ghost tales. In the third season, the original cattle drive reached its destination in the middle of the season. Who would? Well, we'll all be more comfortable in the parlor. Besides, no one will have to guard the water. May I have... In the late 1950s, the TV series Rawhide took viewers on a thrilling ride through the American West. Among its episodes were chilling tales that delved into supernatural terrain, leaving audiences both captivated and spooked. Episodes like Incident at the Top of the World, Incident of the Murder Steer, and Incident of the Haunted Hills each brought their own brand of eeriness to life. The episode titled Incident at the Top of the World saw the main characters grappling with strange occurrences while driving cattle through snowy mountains. As they climbed higher up the treacherous slopes, Ghostly apparitions began appearing before them. These spectral visions added a layer of tension to the already precarious situation, making it difficult for the crew to distinguish reality from illusion. With nightfall approaching fast, survival became a matter of confronting these unsettling hallucinations. Another bone-chilling episode was Incident of the Murder Steer. Here, a seemingly ordinary steer transformed into something menacing when one of the drovers met his untimely demise under mysterious circumstances. Suspicion fell upon the beast, which seemed possessed by some dark force. This ominous presence cast a shadow over the entire herd, turning familiar surroundings sinister and threatening everyone's safety. Lastly, Incident of the Haunted Hills transported the audience to an abandoned mining town shrouded in mystery. Rumors swirled around about hauntings and curses linked to stolen gold. Armed with nothing but courage and determination, our heroes decided to investigate further despite clear signs of danger lurking everywhere. Shadows moved unnaturally, sounds echoed strangely, and objects flew across rooms, all pointing towards paranormal activity. These stories gained extra effectiveness due to the atmospheric black and white cinematography used throughout the series. Every scene felt authentic, enhancing the overall viewing experience. Whether it was the stark contrast between light and darkness or the subtle play of shadows, everything contributed to maintaining the suspenseful mood. In the popular TV series Rawhide, which debuted in 1959, many future stars made early appearances before finding fame elsewhere. Among these guest stars were Elizabeth Montgomery, who later starred in Bewitched, Leonard Nimoy, and DeForest Kelly, both of whom went on to play key roles in Star Trek. Buddy Ebsen, known for the Beverly Hillbillies, and Barbara Eden, who became a household name in I Dream of Jeannie. Other notable guests included Alan Hale Jr., June Lockhart, and Gavin McLeod. While the show focused on the lives of cattle drovers in the American West, it also served as a stepping stone for several actors who would become synonymous with other iconic roles. Audiences tuned in each week to watch the adventures of Rowdy Yates, played by a young Clint Eastwood, whose character provided a focal point for the unfolding stories set against the backdrop of life on the range. Offscreen, Eastwood found himself involved in personal matters that eventually spilled into public view. During the show's run, he fathered a daughter named Kimber with stuntwoman Roxanne Tunis. This revelation occurred much later when the National Enquirer broke the story in 1989. At the time, Eastwood was married to his first wife, Maggie Johnson, but news of his extramarital relationship remained under wraps until years after Rawhide concluded its six-season span. Born in 1964, Kimber grew up largely out of the limelight, reflective of her father's approach to keeping his private affairs separate from his professional persona. Bet you've never seen 
Stereopticans. In its inaugural season, Rawhide was filmed at Universal International Studios in Hollywood. This classic television series later moved on to extensive railroad scenes in the third season, which were shot on the Sierra Railroad in California. The choice of location added authenticity to the portrayal of the Old West. The production schedule for Rawhide was quite demanding. For most of its run, it followed a weekly format, with only a brief respite of three to four months between seasons. This relentless pace left little room for rest, especially for the lead actors who were required to deliver consistent performances throughout each episode. From the second season through to the seventh, every season consisted of 30 episodes. Such a heavy workload made extended breaks a rarity for the cast members. Despite the challenges posed by this rigorous shooting schedule, they managed to maintain high production standards, contributing significantly to the show's longevity and popularity among viewers. We gotta be out of here first thing in the morning. Paul Brinegar will always be remembered for his iconic role as Wishbone on the popular TV series Rawhide. Over the course of the show's six seasons, Brinegar appeared in an impressive 215 episodes, leaving a lasting impact on audiences through his memorable performance. Brinegar's portrayal of Wishbone was so distinctive that he was virtually unrecognizable without his signature facial hair. In fact, his bushy beard became such an integral part of his character that it was difficult to imagine him any other way. This just goes to show how much a small detail like a beard can contribute to building a larger-than-life persona. Despite playing a supporting role, Brinegar brought depth and nuance to the character of Wishbone, making him a fan favorite alongside the show's leads. Through his years on Rawhide, he established himself as a reliable and talented actor capable of delivering strong performances time and again. All things considered, Paul Brinegar's work on Rawhide remains a testament to his skill and dedication as an artist. Even today, fans continue to appreciate his contributions to this classic Western series, which has left an indelible mark on television history. Whether you're watching reruns or discovering the show for the first time, keep an eye out for Wishbone. And remember that sometimes, even a humble beard can become a symbol of greatness. Orphaned by one of those terrible battles that killed his whole tribe. My father found him right. Eric Fleming became a household name, thanks to his role as Gil Favor in the popular TV series Rawhide. For seven consecutive seasons, viewers tuned in to see Fleming lead a group of cattle drovers through the American West. But when Fleming was abruptly let go due to cost-cutting measures before the eighth season, loyal fans were outraged. They threatened to boycott the show, refusing to support it without their beloved leading man. Fleming's departure marked a significant turning point for Rawhide, which had been on air since 1959. His portrayal of the trail boss had become synonymous with the show itself, making his absence all the more noticeable. Despite attempts by producers to carry on with new actors, audiences simply couldn't get behind the change. In fact, just one episode into the eighth season, ratings plummeted. CBS quickly realized the mistake they had made by firing Fleming. Viewers who had grown attached to the original cast refused to accept the replacement actor, and many stopped watching altogether. As a result, the network decided to pull the plug on the iconic Western series. After eight successful years on air, Rawhide came to an unexpected end, leaving fans disappointed and nostalgic for what once was. To this day, the legacy of Fleming's performance continues to live on in reruns and memories. This and uh, we may never know. Give me that bottle. The rifle. Eric Fleming, the star of the popular TV series Rawhide, met a tragic end soon after its conclusion. He was in Peru, working on a film called High Jungle, when disaster struck. While navigating through treacherous rapids in a canoe, Fleming encountered difficulties. The vessel capsized, leaving him vulnerable to the swift currents. Despite attempts to rescue him, Fleming succumbed to the water and perished in the rapids. This unfortunate incident brought a sudden halt to his promising career in Hollywood. Tick. Are you sure? It's Texas Tick, Mr. Holt. There's no question. In the late 1950s, westerns dominated American television. Among them was Rawhide, a popular show that aired from 1959 to 1966. This classic follows a group of cattle herders driving a herd of cows herders driving a herd of cows from Texas to Kansas. The program starred Eric Fleming as trail boss Gil Favor and Clint Eastwood as Rowdy Yates, 
a young cowhand learning the ropes. Each episode featured new challenges for the drovers, including dangerous weather conditions, rustlers, and encounters with Native Americans. Set in the post-Civil War era, Rawhide provided audiences with a glimpse into the tough and unforgiving life on the frontier. The show was significant because it offered a different perspective than many other westerns of the time. Instead of focusing on lawmen or outlaws, Rawhide centered around the everyday experiences of ordinary people trying to make a living in a challenging environment. Despite being filmed primarily in studio lots, the show managed to capture the vastness and beauty of the American West. Its memorable theme song, performed by Frankie Lane, became a hit and added to the show's popularity. Overall, Rawhide remains a beloved example of classic Western television, capturing the spirit of adventure and perseverance that define the genre. Really got trail fever. <clears throat> the creation of the iconic 1959 TV series Rawhide required a strong cast, carefully assembled through a series of auditions and chemistry tests. Each actor's journey to their role offers fascinating insights into the casting process. For Eric Fleming, who played Gil Favor, the trail boss, the path began when he left his native California to pursue acting in New York City. After years of hard work on stage and screen, he landed the lead role in Rawhide, bringing maturity and depth to the character. Clint Eastwood, cast as Rowdy Yates, had already appeared in several films, but remained relatively unknown until he read for Rawhide. His rugged charm and natural talent secured him the part, launching his career as a Western star. The supporting roles were equally crucial. Paul Branigar, portraying Wishbone, underwent numerous auditions before being selected due to his knack for comedic timing. Chev Woolley, playing Pete Nolan, brought extensive musical experience to the table, impressing producers during callbacks. Steve Raines, initially hired as Jim Quince, unfortunately passed away early in production. He was replaced by James Murdoch as Joe Scarlett, showcasing quick thinking and adaptability behind the scenes. Auditions focus not just on individual performances, but also on the actor's ability to create convincing relationships. Chemistry tests revealed whether potential cast members could build camaraderie essential to the ensemble's success. One defining moment came when Fleming and Eastwood shared their first scene together. Their instant rapport convinced the creators they had found the perfect pairing for the wise yet gruff trail boss and his young apprentice. Thus, the cast of Rawhide took shape a diverse group united by determination, skill, and mutual respect. Together, they would captivate audiences for eight seasons, leaving an indelible mark on television history. The directors of the 1959 TV series Rawhide brought the Western drama to life through their unique visions and approaches. One such director was Rudolf Maté, known for his distinctive visual style. Maté often used wide shots and deep focus to capture the vastness of the American West and its rugged terrain. He also employed close-ups to convey character emotions, allowing audiences to connect with the show's cowboys and outlaw. Collaboration played a key role in shaping each episode. Directors worked closely with writers to develop engaging narratives, while coordinating efforts with cinematographers to create compelling imagery. They spent time discussing scenes and rehearsals with actors like Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood, helping them shape their performances to match the desired tone and atmosphere. Mate drew inspiration from various sources, including classic literature and European cinema. His background in photography influenced his keen eye for composition, lighting, and movement. Meanwhile, other Rawhide directors found motivation in contemporary films, television shows, and even real-life experiences during the heyday of Western expansion. These diverse inspirations shaped the distinct look and feel of each episode, appealing to viewers who craved adventure and camaraderie set against iconic landscapes. As production progressed throughout the years, so too did the evolution of the show's aesthetic under different directors' guidance. New personnel joined the team, contributing fresh ideas and perspectives that kept Rawhide dynamic and captivating. Despite these changes, however, one constant remained, the unwavering commitment to delivering high-quality entertainment rooted in authenticity and craftsmanship. Through collaboration, creativity, and passion, the minds behind Rawhide created an enduring cultural artifact beloved by generations past and present. You, you must not be too harsh on him, though. He's... In the late 1950s, the TV show Rawhide brought the Wild West to life. 
Set designers built realistic saloons, ranches, and rustlers camps, complete with aged wood and weathered signs. They even crafted customized props like worn-in saddles and cowboy hats. The series was mainly filmed on ranch land in California, where they could capture the vast plains and rugged terrain seen in the Old West. However, recreating those wide open spaces came with its own set of challenges. To give the illusion of endless prairies, crew members strategically placed cameras and used forced perspective techniques, making actors appear farther apart than they actually were. Filming outdoors also meant dealing with unpredictable elements, scorching heat, chilling winds, and occasional rainstorms. Yet, these conditions added authenticity to each scene. Actors had to become accustomed to harsh weather while delivering their lines. Another innovation during Rawhide's production involved sound editing. Instead of recording audio directly onto the camera, technicians captured it separately. This allowed them greater control over background noise reduction and dialogue clarity during post-production. Despite the hardships faced by the cast and crew, their dedication resulted in a compelling depiction of frontier life. Each episode took viewers on a journey through dusty trails, cattle drives, and campfire tales, leaving an indelible mark on television history. Agreed to take you along to Bridges Ford. That's where you're going. How you can do it the hard way, the easy way. Up to you. The creation of the Rawhide musical score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composer Dmitry Tyomkin and musician Alexander Courage. Tyomkin, known for his work on Western films like High Noon and Rio Bravo, brought a sense of drama and tension to the Rawhide theme. Meanwhile, Courage added a catchy melody that helped make the theme one of the most recognizable TV show themes of all time. The music in Rawhide serves to enhance both the narrative and emotional tone of the show. For instance, during action scenes, fast-paced music heightens the intensity and suspense. Conversely, during quieter moments, softer melodies set the mood and help viewers connect emotionally with the characters. Dmitry Tiomkin once shared that he aimed to create music that would tell the story and explain what cannot be explained by dialogue. This approach can be seen throughout Rawhide, where music plays a vital role in conveying emotions and advancing the plot. Alexander Courage echoed these sentiments, stating that their goal was to create music that felt authentic and captured the spirit of the American West. To achieve this, they incorporated elements of traditional folk songs and Native American music into the score. One notable piece from the Rawhide soundtrack is Rowdy's theme, which accompanies Rowdy Yates, played by Clint Eastwood, whenever he appears on screen. This recurring motif helps establish Rowdy's character and adds continuity to the series. Another memorable track is the trail song, sung during the opening credits by Frankie Lane. With lyrics about life being like a rodeo and facing challenges head on, it perfectly encapsulates the adventurous nature of Rawhide. Composing the music for Rawhide presented its own unique challenges. Since each episode featured different stories and locations, Tyomkin and Courage had to craft diverse scores that could adapt to various situations while still maintaining consistency. Their ability to seamlessly blend dramatic cues, character themes, and lively instrumentals resulted in a captivating audio experience that elevated Rawhide above other contemporary Western shows. Can it get? Sheriff Wilson deputized me. I'll kill you. And call. One of the most iconic scenes in Rawhide comes in episode 13 of the first season, titled Incident of the Tumbleweed. Rowdy Yates, played by Clint Eastwood, faces off against a group of outlaws led by Winch Cavanaugh, portrayed by James Best. As tensions rise, Yates takes a stand, leading to a tense showdown captured through tight shots and low angles. Cinematographer Jack Marta uses high contrast lighting to emphasize the seriousness of the situation. According to Eastwood himself, it was one of those classic Western moments where you got two guys squaring off, and it felt like we were creating something special. This scene set the stage for many more memorable moments throughout the series, cementing its place in television history. You got the name of that school she goes to back east? Mm-hmm. I just soon you'd write the letter. The main thing is... The 1959 TV series Rawhide had a significant cultural and social impact during its time and beyond. Starring Eric Fleming as Gil Favor and a young Clint Eastwood as Rowdy Yates, the show followed a group of cattle herders driving a herd from Texas to Missouri after the Civil War. The program quickly became popular among viewers due to its exciting storylines and compelling characters. Audiences were drawn to the raw depiction of frontier life and the gritty realism presented by the show's creators. This representation of the Old West was unique for television at the time, 
making it stand out amidst other family-friendly programming. Moreover, Rawhide played a crucial role in shaping the Western genre on both small and big screens. Its success paved the way for many iconic films and shows set in the American West, influencing future productions like Bonanza, Gunsmoke, and even Star Trek. In fact, the famous theme music, composed by Dmitry Tyomkin, remains one of the most recognizable tunes associated with cowboy culture today. As far as social themes go, Rawwire touched upon various aspects of post-Civil War America, including race relations, law enforcement, and survival in harsh environments. While some critics argue that the portrayal of Native Americans left much to be desired, others suggest that the series did attempt to address racial prejudices through nuanced character development and plot twists. For instance, the introduction of African-American actor Raymond Sanjak as the trail boss Nathan in season 6 demonstrated a progressive approach towards integrating diverse talent into mainstream media. Similarly, episodes exploring vigilante justice brought attention to moral complexities surrounding crime and punishment during that era. Overall, Rawhide captivated audiences with thrilling narratives while contributing thoughtfully to contemporary discourse around societal issues. Even now, the show serves as a fascinating snapshot of mid-20th century perceptions about the Wild West and continues to inspire modern interpretations of the classic genre. Me believing in your judgment, Aiden. Upon its release, the 1959 TV series Rawhide received mixed reviews from critics, but gained a significant following among audiences. The show's gritty depiction of the American West and strong performances by its lead actors were praised, while some criticized it for lacking originality and being overly violent. Eric Morris of the New York Times described Rawhide as a solid Western drama with a good deal of vigor. He commended the show's pacing and action sequences, noting that they kept viewers on the edge of their seats. However, he also felt that the series failed to bring anything new to the genre. On the other hand, Variety magazine gave Rawhide a more negative review, calling it a run-of-the-mill Western saga with little freshness or imagination. Despite this criticism, the publication acknowledged the appeal of the show's central character, Rowdy Yates, played by Clint Eastwood. Audiences responded positively to Rawhide, with many praising its exciting storylines and memorable characters. The show quickly became one of CBS's most popular programs, attracting millions of viewers each week. Its success led to a six-season run, spanning from 1959 to 1965. As for awards, Rawhide was nominated for three Emmys during its time on air. In 1963, both the show and actor Paul Brenniger earned nods in the categories of Outstanding Dramatic Series and Outstanding Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role, respectively. Additionally, composer Dmitry Tiamkin won two Grammy Awards for his work on the show's theme music. These accolades served as validation for those involved in the production of Rawhide. For the cast and crew, recognition from prestigious organizations like the Emmys and Grammys signified their hard work and dedication to creating quality television entertainment. Furthermore, the show's commercial success demonstrated the public's appetite for Western dramas, paving the way for future productions within the genre. Every man in the outfit. I wouldn't say every man. During the filming of Rawhide, Clint Eastwood, who played Rowdy Yates, was known for his practical jokes on set. One time, he filled the boots of fellow actor Paul Brenegar, who played Wishbone, with live frogs. The show's star, Eric Fleming, had a fear of horses, which made filming challenging. He overcame it by working closely with horse trainers and forming bonds with the animals. Sheb Woolley, who played Pete Nolan, often entertained the cast and crew with his guitar playing between takes. His song Purple People Eater became a surprise hit in 1958. One episode required the crew to build a full-scale replica of a Pony Express station. They constructed it so authentically that it later became a popular tourist attraction in California. During the harsh desert shoots, the cast and crew faced extreme weather conditions, including dust storms and freezing temperatures at night. Despite these challenges, they formed close friendships that lasted long after the show ended. James Murakami, the set decorator, creatively repurposed old movie props and Western memorabilia to save money. This resourcefulness added depth and authenticity to the show's settings. Rawhide also provided opportunities for many young actors, like future stars Robert Vaughn and Lainey Anderson, who appeared in early episodes before finding fame elsewhere. Despite its success, Rawhide never won any major awards during its run, 
However, it remains a beloved classic, leaving a lasting impact on both viewers and those involved in its creation. Its gritty realism paved the way for more mature Western TV shows and movies. Friday night, heard. I was on last night. Yeah, so? The TV show Rawhide first aired in 1959, leaving a significant mark on Western genre productions. Starring Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood, the program followed cattle herders driving longhorns from Texas to Kansas. While it may seem like just another Western, Rawhide's influence extends far beyond its initial run. The series was innovative in its portrayal of raw, gritty realism compared to earlier Western dramas. Its episodic format allowed writers to explore various themes, making each episode unique yet consistent with the overall narrative. This approach influenced later shows like Gunsmoke, Bonanza, and even modern series like HBO's Deadwood. Moreover, Rawhide served as a stepping stone for many actors' careers. Before becoming famous for his roles in spaghetti westerns, Clint Eastwood got his big break here. He learned valuable skills under director Ted Post, which he would utilize throughout his illustrious career. Similarly, other cast members also found success after Rawhide, including Paul Brenegar, Steve Rains, and Chev Woolley. Furthermore, Rawhide had an indirect but substantial effect on cinema. For instance, composer Dmitry Tyomkin created the iconic theme music, blending traditional Western sounds with contemporary styles. His work set trends for future composers scoring both films and television shows. Additionally, some episodes were stretched into feature-length movies for international markets, demonstrating how successful TV shows could cross over into movie theaters. To sum up, though Rawhide might appear ordinary, its contributions to storytelling techniques, acting training grounds, musical scores, and crossover potential have left indelible imprints on Hollywood's landscape. Now, well, if you want to lose all your winnings, I'm willing. In real money, cash money. Did you know that the popular 1959 TV series Rawhide almost didn't air because CBS executives thought it was too similar to another show? Despite initial doubts, the Western drama quickly became a hit, captivating audiences with its gripping stories and unforgettable characters. The program follows a group of trail bosses driving cattle across the American West. But beyond its exciting plot lines, Rawhide left a lasting impression on many viewers like you. Maybe you found yourself drawn into the camaraderie between Rowdy Yates and Gil Favor, or perhaps you admired the strong female roles played by Marilyn Ross and Chev Woolley. Whatever aspect resonated with you, we would love to hear about it. Share your favorite moments, personal connections, or even what drew you to watch the series in the first place. By engaging with each other through likes, shares, and heartfelt comments, we can create a warm community filled with nostalgia and appreciation for classic television. If you enjoyed reminiscing about Rawhide, consider subscribing to our channel for more trips down memory lane. Together, let's celebrate these timeless shows that continue to inspire us today. We look forward to hearing your stories. Protect me. I've been doing it myself for almost 50 years. Like I said, I'm a